Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you how I use core knowledge science in my homeschool. If you're new here, I have an eight-year-old, a four-year-old, and a one-year-old. I'm homeschooling my eight-year-old who is in third grade and my four-and-a-half-year-old who is doing kindergarten level work. So I know a lot of people have questions about core knowledge and it can seem very overwhelming when you first look at it. So I thought it would be a great idea to show you how I plan for a lesson and what I do and how I navigate the site. Because if you didn't know, entire core knowledge is free online curriculum. You can access everything online. You can choose to print it at home if you want. You can choose to buy physical copies. This is the physical copy of the student reader book. As you can see here, it was only about $7. Or you can choose to just use your laptop, tablet, whatever you have, it's up to you. So I'm gonna show you what I do and how I use it real quick. All right, this is Core Knowledge Science. This is specifically for grade three, investigating for forces. This is the first unit in grade three. And what I really like about Core Knowledge is a couple of things. It gives you a set separate lesson plan that you can follow, or as I do, I just make notes of how I'm gonna be using it. And it actually gives you a blank template to use as well to create your own. What I really like about this is it's very on par for your child's age. A lot of the curriculums I see, especially with science or geography or history, is K through 12 or K through four. So there's a big learning gap there, right? There's a lot more that a or there's a lot more than an eighth grader can do than a kindergartner. So as a parent, you're often doing a lot more work, trying to make it fit whatever age group you have. So what I really like is that this is very appropriate for my eight-year-old. She can read this independently if she needs to. It's not too much information. It's a good exposure. It goes deeper than some of the younger grades, which I have a review on and flip through of their core knowledge's geography that we're currently doing as well to see how they kind of compare. So as you get older, obviously there's more work and more depth involved, but what I love about core knowledge is it builds upon itself. So each varying, each next grade builds a little more on what you previously knew. So I really like that. So again, I'm doing this with my eight year old who's in third grade and my four and a half year old, she does this along with us. She doesn't do any of the writing, but she likes the demonstrations and stuff. So she joins us for that. So, like I said, I bought the student reader. This is about, I think, $7 on the website. You don't have to. You can, of course, pull this up on your tablet or your computer. I prefer to have a physical copy my child can look at. That's just how I like it. But I do have, look at the teacher guides online. I actually print out the science once. And I do that because there's a lot of discussion questions that go with the unit and demonstrations and it's just easier for me to have a physical copy that one I can mark up. I know a lot of people use the Notability app with Core Knowledge. I'm just not, I prefer pen and paper and real physical things I can touch. That's just how I work. So I printed out the lesson seven because that is where we're at. Now back to the sample lesson plans they give you. So obviously you can see the ones we crossed out, we've done. I do this program in two days. We do it on Thursdays and Fridays. So most of the time it's broken up into two days for you. Sometimes a lesson is just one. So I will break that up myself. But again, you'll see here, I made little notes. For each lesson we start, I start with an actual video. I rotate between three videos. I do Bill Nye, which is an awesome resource. You can find a lot of stuff online for free. You can also check your local library. A lot of libraries have Bill Nye DVDs still. I also use Magic School Bus. Again, you can find a lot of the videos online or check your local library. Like for example, my library has the brand new season, um, the Rides Again, which is the new version, but they also have a lot of the older ones as well. So I find that really helpful. So I do Bill Nye, I do Magic School Bus, and third is Generation Genius. This is very similar to Bill Nye, and I'll of course link the website down below. It's probably a five, 10 minute quick lessons about whatever your topic is, and it fits almost perfectly in line with the standards for that grade. Core knowledge takes into account the educational standards of what children are typically learning in that grade, which I really appreciate, because although we homeschool right now, that might not be our choice always in the future. So I really appreciate that it keeps my child on par with what the other children are, her peer group is learning. 
So, like I said, Generation Genius usually covers the topic almost perfectly for these specific lessons. And so, the first day, we will do a Bill Nye video. That's how we will start our lesson out, and then we'll go into the physical lesson. The second day, we will do a Generation Genius video, and then go into our lesson. And then, of course, I have written here, because we'll still be talking about magnets for next week. Because, again, we only do this twice a week. I have a Magic School Bus DVD that I got from the library. So that is how I do my overview. Um, the unit is not very long, so we will go through this in... So we will go through this in about three weeks, two, three, four weeks, depending on how you spread it out. So you're not spending an entire year on a specific topic, which I really like, because that can get kind of boring for the teacher and the student. So you're going through different units. This is the first unit we're covering. So let's go over to how we understand the teacher guides, because I know these can be confusing. So right here you have your learning objectives, what your goals are, what you're gonna be covering, what specific things you're gonna be doing. These I really appreciate. These are the science standards you're gonna be co covering. And it even gives you here, when you click on this link, um, when you have it up on a computer, it takes you to the actual standards that they're gonna be covering. It also covers specifically um, what areas of science the teacher will be covering and gives you background knowledge. Actually, let me show you guys real quick. All right, real quick. So this is the core knowledge site I just brought up on my computer. Right there, online resources. Again, to find that, you just go to the curriculum, you go down to science, and it's a page on there. So these are all the different units they have. So you can see here, investigating forces, that's what we're on right now. And again, everything is la labeled by lesson, which makes it super easy to find. So I go to lesson seven, and it will give you specific links to those standards that you can read more about to learn more for yourself. But I feel really comfortable knowing that it's got some really good background research to it. All right, back to this. So again, those are the standards we were talking about that you can get detailed information on right there. Again, this is more for the teachers, knowing what you're gonna be going over in a brief overview. Cause you know, it's been a while since I covered these topics myself that I learned about these. So it's really nice to have this information to refresh me before going in and giving me the option to go deeper before I have to teach it. So it goes over the vocab you'll be covering, covering and it's not, this is this, this is this. You will use this while you're doing your reading and different things like that. It comes very naturally. They do give the option of doing a vocabulary deck of cards or index cards, which I really like, and I'll show you how we use that. So right here under resources, instruction resources, you're gonna need, it's gonna tell you right here. Again, this is all free on their website. So I printed 7.1, it's two pages, front and back, obviously. And this will be the sheet that the child or the student fills out. So it's gonna tell you what your teacher demonstration here is and what supplies you're gonna need. We are almost done with this complete unit and I've yet, the only thing I had to buy that I didn't already have in my house was some sandpaper squares. But again, you can adapt these if you don't have the materials. For example, I definitely have magnets at home. I have paper clips. I have a lot of these things already, just collecting them in one spot. If you don't have something, you can sub out something different. And it's gonna tell you what things you need to collect for this lesson. So it makes it really easy to have these things prepared. All right, so, and again, it's gonna tell you what you need to prepare first. It's gonna tell you to get your magnet fishing poles. So it tells you exactly what to do. You're gonna take a string, you're gonna attach it to a stick or a doll rod and attach a magnet to that so it's going to look like a fishing pole. Then you're gonna put a bunch of magnetic and non-magnetic magnetic objects in a bowl to go fishing. So you always start with a big question. And what I like about starting with the DVD is that, oh, right, DVD. It gives a 
brief overview, especially if it's Bill Nye or Magic School Bus, it gives a nice overview before we start talking about it so the kids are familiar with the vocabulary that we're gonna be using, they're familiar with it, and it kind of gives them more confidence in their answers already having brief overview. So that's why we usually start with the DVD. So we usually start with a big question we're trying to answer, and it gives you guided questions with answers, which I really appreciate because, again, I don't remember every aspect of this. So it's nice to know the answers are included in case I don't remember something. So this know the science part, I think, and I'll tell you where to use it right here. Oops, sorry. It goes deeper and into those discussion questions with your child. So you're gonna start doing your demonstration with the fishing poles. And again, you as the teacher are doing the demonstration and your child or student will have a chance to do that um, experiment themselves, but you're gonna show it first and start to prompt some of those questions. Again, it gives you these questions here with a, a vague answer of what you're looking for. So you can kind of lead your student towards that direction if they're struggling. Again, so these are all the questions that, it's very discussion based, which I really like. It's not memorize this and blah, blah, blah. It's getting them involved, using their hands, and everything is at an age where it's appropriate. It's easy for them to digest. So again, we have a know the science section here. So these will be the last questions we do. And that is all we will do for that first day, day one. We will watch that DVD. We will, I will show, we'll start with our big picture question. I will demonstrate the activity and we'll have lots of discussion questions to go with that. And that's it for the first day lesson. So for day two, they actually have do your vocabulary cards. I do this at the end. I switch it to the end after we've done everything because that just works better for my child. And I'll show you what we use. This is just a index flip from the dollar store. So it's just a dollar. And again, my daughter just writes the vocab word we're working on. She writes a picture of it and then she writes her definition. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be spelled correctly. It's just for her. And we'll go through these. And it's funny because my four and a half year old can go through these and tell me the answers. It's really quite cute. So she will do different things like that. And she really likes drawings. So she has fun with that. So, and she'll just write the definitions on the back. So she's really actually been enjoying that. I think it's a fun way to do it. So we'll do that at the end. But for day two, and it gives you the definitions, kind of what you're going for. You know, I will discuss it with my daughter. What do you think this means? What have we talked about? And she'll come up with her own definition. It's not the exact definition that's given in here. So next, what they're gonna do, be doing mainly on day two is they're gonna be going through this worksheet. And again, these aren't overly hard. I don't require complete sentences for my child. I don't require perfect spelling. This is just more of notes and observations. So it's pretty easy. She's gonna do the exact demonstration that I would have showed her how to do, and she's gonna make her prediction. This is something we've talked about before. What does prediction mean? So it's building upon things she previously learned. And then she's going to write her observations, her predictions, and then she's gonna write if they were correct and why they were correct or why they were wrong, which really is wonderful and easy and it really sticks. And she doesn't struggle with this because again, it's building upon the things she's already learned. So after she does that, again, it tells you to do that. You discuss the different things. I don't make her do this page alone. We go through it. If she has questions, we talk about it. So you do a summarize, because you're relating back to all the information. Last week we were learning about motion and patterns, so it's taking you back and applying that knowledge to stuff you already know. Same with that, we've talked about cause and effect, and it's just reinforcing those things, reinforcing what you've already learned and building upon it. And if you ever need the answers to 
the worksheets, there is a paper or um, on the website as well. Obviously everything is online and free, but it tells you what specific answers you would be looking for. And some of them are pretty, you know, answers will vary based on what your student chooses, but some of them are more straightforward. So that's nice to have an answer sheet as well. All right. And then you kind of just sum up the entire lesson and that's it. That's the entire two day lesson. I would say, depending on the demonstration of things, it doesn't take long at all. The kids really enjoy it, it's fun, and it's easy to teach. There's a lot of leg work that's already done for you, and that's really nice as a teacher. It's not necessarily open and go. You do have to prep some things ahead of time. You have to read a little things ahead of time, but that makes you a better teacher. It makes you better able to convey that knowledge to your child. So I highly recommend core knowledge. It's worked really well for us. And I really look forward to trying the other units. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys for watching.